What's up, it's Nez, and welcome to our series where we talk about all things gaming and pop culture. The late Satoru Iwata once said that above all, video games should be just one thing, fun for everyone. And although that's a very noble ideal to chase after, games have evolved so much as a medium that it's now capable of delivering so much more varied experiences. In a simpler time, we were all enjoying addictively fun games like Super Mario, Tetris, Pac-Man, and we hadn't yet realized the potential for games to be much more than just pure entertainment. But as time went on, we started getting more and more stories in our games, not only to complement the gameplay, but to centralize the experience around. Journey was one such influential game that changed how we view narratives in video games. It was one of those games that you experienced rather than played, not as a video game, but as a legitimate work of art. It didn't challenge you in the same way conventional games were played, but it immersed you in a world and story that could only be delivered within the interactivity of a video game. That said, the industry was inspired by Journey in different ways. Some took it in a way that games should be just like film, with more acting, more cutscenes, more epic storylines, and dear god 24 FPS for a quote unquote cinematic look. But in Journey's wake left the legacy of a new genre, the narrative exploration game. In favor of the narrative, gameplay was either sidelined or completely removed from the experience. In what I call a pretentious act, some devs have decided that their writing was way more important than the actual trait that made games unique from every other medium that exists. Instead of aiming for a symbiosis with the gameplay, which a few games have ultimately proved to be the epitome of what games can truly be, you're just in a walking simulator with hands held by the dev from their last story piece to another. Yes, Satoru Iwata did say that games should just be one thing, fun for everyone. But not all games are fun. Not all gamers are driven by having fun. Some are in it for the challenge, some are in it for the glory, some are in it for the story. But it always has to come down to the gameplay. John Total Biscuit Bane, a critic who I admire very much, once expounded on Iwata's ideal. No, games don't necessarily need to be fun, but they have to be compelling. Whether it's through the narrative, the gameplay, or at best, the marrying of both. And with that, where can we see this genre going today? The game What Remains of Edith Finch thankfully builds on the idea that narratives and stories are a way to enhance games and not hold them back. And in games that directly honor Journey, like the melancholic underwater game Abzu, or the recently released meditative adventure that is Rhyme, we can see that it's not in the ending of the stories that compels us to play games, but it's in the journey to get there. Gameplay shouldn't be sacrificed to enhance the narrative. We're not film. The games have the undeniable uniqueness of interactivity and personal immersion, which I feel is a dimension above film which they can never replicate. So games shouldn't be trying to be something they're not. We've all enjoyed games one way or another, and it was because they were compelling to play and not just be watched. Whether it's ranking up in your favorite multiplayer, reaching that next chapter, beating that challenging boss, or even just interacting and talking with the characters. It's in the journey that defines the gaming experience, and that we should never forget. My name is Nez, and thanks for watching. If you have your own thoughts on gameplay or narratives, leave a comment down below. And if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe so we could grow our channel together. See you all next time.